Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's July and I wanted to show you around our garden again just to show you what plants um, I have blooming and nicely flowering now what you can find around the gardens in this time of the year and also just for a little pleasure. Hope you enjoy it. Let's start in this corner. So we have the lemon tree which has put a lot of growth on since this spring when it was all dried out. And the nerines, which I've planted two months or something ago. There is a video on my channel as well. And then a couple of other plants that I've planted which aren't doing very well because they've just been nibbled on by the slugs and snails for a million times. So yeah, poor guys, I'm trying to save them. But what I'm very happy about is my Achillea. And this is the one I got from my plants for my flower hall at the Beth, Beth Chateau's garden. And there were more florets on. The earliest one got nibbled on, snipped off by the snails, unfortunately. So this is the first one. And then there is a few more. And I'm still waiting for them. Cosmos is flowering nicely. And these are all of the ones that I planted from seed. So I'm very happy about them. I do need to deadhead them as well. Guys, keep deadheading your, your flowers, your plants, because um, they, will, they will grow um, and flower more profusely because obviously the energy that would grow, that would go into this to you know, produce and set seeds for the plants um will go into other bats so i will snip this off down here the jeans growing nicely as well it's got a lot of new shoots as well after i chopped it down uh what else the lovely verbenas and these are the ones from the cuttings that I've taken from this big one when I, when I was pruning it down uh, early this spring. Sedum, which is slowly, very slowly getting on the color as well. I love these little flowers. I love sedum, it's such a lovely plant and it will you know, keep it a um, lovely structure throughout the winter as well. So it's a really, really good plant. And then the Trusia, poor Trusia is struggling there. This pot doesn't get much water actually because uh, it's just in the rain shadow just underneath the gutters. So I have to be really careful watering them when it's really dry. And then the calendulas there with a few sweet peas. Such a beautiful color. And they smell amazing more cosmos and sweet william there so this lavender is flowering it's just just started flowering very recently there's another one here in the corner which doesn't have uh, doesn't get so much sun and it's actually flowering it was actually flowering sooner than this one it's got more flowers on strangely enough a um, little bit of brussels sprouts and my zinnias that are also from seed. I'm so happy about them, they're so beautiful. The dahlia doesn't do very well, as you can see, it's been nibbled a lot. I kept moving it from one place to another, but the little buggers just kept finding it wherever I put it. But it does now have one bud on, so hopefully it won't get munched on. The Louisia is uh, flowering off, but it it's starting to have more leaves and I think it's gonna have more florets as well. So yeah, as you can see, this lavender has got a little bit more flowers. Strangely, it's in a corner where it doesn't get much sun. I mean, it does get sun in the afternoon, but that's about it. The veg parge, I have to be honest, I didn't pay too much attention to it and weirdly enough the veg is not doing very well this year for me 
for some reason. A carrot, which I completely forgot about. And as you can see, it already got nibbled on. The beetroot is okay, but that's about it. And I'll take you right on this side, where there is more sweet peas. Beautiful ones. And it smells so nice. But all of my sweet peas got um, powdery mildew this year for some reason. Then the nigella, the love in the mist, has got buds on, so I can't wait for those flowers. This bed of the edible flowers got really overtaken by the nasturtium, as you can see. It was very slow to start and then suddenly it just sprouted like so profusely and it's got a lot and a lot of leaves. Um, not many flowers though, we did have a couple, but hey ho. Um, more calendula here and then we have borage in flower. Actually it's kind of slowly starting to go over. Then this is the tomato plant that I saved from being broken by feather and starting and it's doing quite well. The chamomile is growing nicely and it's full, 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 full of ants on it as you can see. The pelargonium here. And as I said, you probably remember I said this one, this bed was here throughout the winter. I didn't take um we didn't overwinter anything inside and it's it's doing perfectly fine. This cabiosa is going crazy this year. It's ju it just keeps flowering and I keep deadheading it so. And I, I cannot get enough of the smell of this. Oh my god, it smells amazing. Ah, so sweet. The wallflower. And then the rose. And for you, you, those of you guys that live in UK, you know we had so much rain recently and there is more even forecasted. So a lot of the flowers got damaged by the weight of the water and the, the torrential rains. So as you can see, I did chop a lot of it down. I pruned it down quite low. And there is new shoots already coming through. So if you're deadheading your roses, don't just deadhead it here. Like let's say this one's gone off. So don't just deadhead here, wait until, or, or you can do it one by one here. And then once all of these are gone over, then just take it down, let's say here, or even lower if you want. And um, soon enough, uh, it will sprout with a new shoot like here, as you can see. So don't be scared to um, chop it down a little bit more. Then in here, we have some of the plants that I also planted from bulbs and uh, some cuttings like this verbena here. So the verbena is doing quite well this year. I'm really, really happy about it. And it's a lovely plant, I love them. For the color, for the fact that it's very transparent, um, but tall so you can create really nice um, kind of walls with this or you can put them at the back of your borders and it doesn't take much space because it's so kind of translucent you know but with a lovely lovely color and height. Freesias, those white freesias, love them, they, smells, they smell amazing and they're doing really well, I'm really surprised, this is actually the very first time that I've grown freesias myself. I like them as cut flowers, um, but I'm not gonna be cutting them for vase because I want to enjoy them here. Um, but when they will um, stop flowering, I mean, when this one will go off, I chop it down, hopefully it will bring another shoot out as well, some other one. 
and the gladioli are quite tall now but no buds yet i'm hoping there will be some this year the bee balm here is going crazy as well i will need to cut it as well and use it for drinks or something I haven't really been feeling like having a drink these days when it's been so cold and wet the hydrangeas are doing really nicely really really nice colors the formium big and nice as always it also has flowers you can see the flowers look like this very nice and architectural plant as well but be very careful because they they can grow massive like when we moved here um it wasn't as big as it is now but we let it grow um and the fatsia here which is nice as well and there is ivy bush as well which is really full of birds and uh, you know, bird songs in spring and in the mornings as well this is Cuba, Japonica, and the old apple tree here. A yew hedge, and this, um, this is the shady bed. Finally, I managed to um, get the thalictrum flowering. I love these little flowers. They're so, so delicate. It's a beautiful plant. Again, it's very tall. Uh, it can get really tall and it's very airy. And the foliage is really, really nice. The foliage is very green and lush. Altheophogum, slowly growing. And then the nettles that I moved over here. And they're doing really well here. The geranium, this is geranium roseanne, started to flower already. I know in some of the gardens, um, because they're in more of sunny positions, they already are going over and I know people are starting to chop them down as well, hoping to get second flash um, of the growth. But mine is slowly just starting to flower recently, so um, if I'll be doing the job I'll do it later but at the moment I'm really enjoying the new flowers and buds. The aquilegias are slowly going over and I'm kind of torn whether I should cut them down or not but I might just leave them in the end it might be food for the slugs hopefully they'll prefer them to any other plants that I don't want them to munch on. Bit of ferns and a bit of wildflowers like the green alkanet other ferns here the alkanilla here and the heucra the little frothy flowers as well and then we have the bronera here which uh, has been munched on as you can see and the hakonekla is growing quite slowly as well digitalis is going slowly over but there are few flowers still but i'm gonna let it seed you know digitalis is a biennial so that means that the first year it will grow the foliage the second year it will flower and then it will you know set seed and do the same thing over so i'm hoping it's going to spread around the garden a little bit so self seed the actia has started to be not really happy in here i know it's been attacked a little bit by the uh, munchers so i might need to move it we'll see there is a tree and it started with this very dark foliage so the leaves were quite dark and now the new ones are more yellowish with this kind of red, red tinge on it 
so beautiful. I can't wait for this um, to get all the lovely colors in autumn. This is a beautiful tree. This rosa here, it's got the, the cutest flowers. Really nice pink, kind of neony pink. Um, the camera doesn't do it justice, but the color in real is kind of neony with a little white middle. I don't know if you can see that. And it smells really nice as well. This is the asters. So they're gonna have nice purple flowers. The peony is gone. I mean, it didn't last for very long. You know, peonies are lovely plants, lovely flowers. But the thing is that uh, literally they're just flower for like a week or two if you're lucky. So, but they're really worth it. But now we have a replacement here, which is this lovely hydrangea, which started to flower really, really nicely. It's really enjoying it here. Which reminds me, I need to actually feed them. And the rose has got a few flowers on still. On is here. Decided to put in the flowers on as well again. This is the second flash actually, which is quite nice. The herb robert is slowly, slowly going over, so once it's stopped flowering, um, I'm gonna pick up some of the foliage and dry it for tea. And also, I read that um, because it's a medicinal plant. You can use it for wounds, which is really good. Some of the vegetables here, so the chard and a few tomatoes flowering. The gooseberries, which are amazing. I'm so enjoying these. I will need to pick up more of them because um, They've been nibbled on, I think, by ants. But I also seen some slugs on the bush, so it might be that as well. But they're very yummy. The beetroot going well, and my one and only chocolate cosmos, which is taking forever to actually bloom. I've been waiting for this one to open for like a week now. It's taking its time strawberries that gone over and um, tada some uh, of our homegrown tomatoes they're doing really well actually there's another one here and it's a mixture of uh, cherry tomatoes and the, and the big tomatoes as I said I don't know the varieties but they're doing quite well and the thing is actually I was surprised because I kept them in those plastic pots that I used as kind of um, greenhouses in winter and I keep water in and we need to top it up so they get fed with a little bit of um, a little bit of food for them um, so they just kept fed whenever they need it and they don't mind sitting in water as you can see and what I will need to do is um, because they have quite a lot of flowers I want all the energy to get into those so the leaves that we don't need, we can get rid of like these ones and they're getting yellow anyways, which we don't want. So we don't want the energy to get into these. So be quite ruthless, you can get rid of them and these can go into your compost. And the famous sweet peas, not so famous now. I. Um, I wasn't cutting them as um, regularly as I should have, really, because life takes over. Um, but it looks nice. I'm gonna keep it there. I'm gonna do let it do its own thing. It will self seed as you can. It's got a lot of pods on, so I let it self seed, and I will collect some of the seeds um, to sow later on this year or next year even. And this bed where you can see we have the carrots here, 
chives, the pinks, and the oregano, which is flowering nicely now. Right guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed our garden and our plants. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new here and also don't forget to hit the like button if you like the video, if you like the plants and also don't forget to comment if you have any questions, ask or let me know um, about your gardens and what, what are your favorite plants this year or this season. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.